Welcome back to another finance video. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of using design thinking to invest. In this video, I'm going to do some clarifications and Q&A for my five year investing journey videos, including questions like how I got such a high return, what stocks did I buy, do I trade options, where I'm gonna go from there and etc. There are quite a few things to cover, so let's get started right now. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Yes, I'm a designer and I like solving fun and challenging problems. And that is where I am here today, tackling the finance and investing problem with design. More specifically, I'm going to provide you some answers and clarities to my previous video on my investing journey. Again, just like my other finance videos, you don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or you learn something new. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Question 1. How do I get such a high return? I have to start this video by acknowledging that I made a mistake in episode 1. If you watch that video, you will see that I said my return is 170%, which I found out it was really not the case. My real return is about 80%. There's such a big discrepancy because I missed the direct deposit in the calculation. I'm trying to be responsible in delivering finance information, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I value being true to my own journey and videos, so I'm just gonna admit my mistake and preface it here. But to quickly explain what happened, there are actually two sources of funding to my brokerage account. One is ACH, which I will initiate from my bank or I will pull the fund from a brokerage account. And the second source is direct deposit, in which I will tell my company or my employer to deduct some of the amount from my paycheck and deposit directly into my brokerage account. In the previous video, I completely forgot about including the direct deposit for some reason. So adding all those back, the final yearly return between July 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2021 is about 80%. It is still pretty good in my opinion, considering that I still beat VTI, SPY, which I'm happy about. So that's the clarification, that's the first FAQ. Question two, what stocks did I buy? As some of the audience commented, I'll be happy to disclose what I own or have owned. And yes, I do read and respond to every comment and request, so feel free to drop a note. Remember from the last video, my strategy evolved quite a bit in V4 itself. V4.0, 4.1, 4.2. In that July to July timeframe, I have had holdings from the common ones like Apple, Nike, Tesla, Facebook, to not so common ones like Airbnb, AT&T, Coca-Cola, Slack, Starbucks, Waste Management. I did not buy and hold any index funds such as VTI, SPY, ARK, KK. Neither did I have any leveraged ones like TQQQ, UPRO, or TNA. My holding was evolving and changing across different versions of my strategies. So I didn't start with all of them and didn't end with all of them. So for example, I started without Airbnb in V4.0, but I did buy some later in V4.2. I started with Starbucks and V4.0, but I sold all of it in V4.2. Question 3. What's the strategy that I use? To boil it down, it's essentially I pick my own stocks instead of buying index fund. The one and only one goal or purpose is to beat the market. This stock picking strategy is built upon the book that I read and mentioned in the previous video, One Up on Wall Street, along with my personal understanding, beliefs, values, and insight to the world and where the economy is going. The book itself outlines a lot of the key ingredients to my strategy. So for example, Company should have positive earnings, increasing earnings, positive book values, company buy back their own stocks, they raise their dividends, they have new products, new operations, new acquisitions, they're expanding to new markets, plus some of my own insights, like companies that are innovating, because that's what I prefer to own. The exact criteria for my stock picking or company picking is quite long and involved, but if you're interested, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'm pretty sure I'll get back to you on that. Question four, do I think I got lucky with the 80% return because I had Tesla as it soared 180% last year? Well, yes and no. Yes, for the part that I did have Tesla as one of my holdings. No, because I did my own homework, I did research, I developed my thesis, I make an informed decision to buy shares of those companies. So it's really not about what I buy, but why I buy what I buy. It's more about the thinking, the mindset, and keep iterating it as you go. Design thinking. 
Question 5, which is quite a logical question as the next one. Since he has luck, is this sustainable? Honestly, I don't believe I'm gonna hit 80% every single year. So I'm not gonna lie or pretend I'm some sort of genius that you have to follow what I do and what I buy. I'm more interested in sharing my thoughts and knowledge to empower you so that you can develop your own strategy. So the ultimate answer to this question all narrows down to what I'm looking for. What am I trying to do here? My goal is clearly defined. As long as I can outperform the market, VTI in this case, with my thesis, with my strategy, I'm happy. So short answer, is it sustainable to make 80% each year? Probably not. Is it sustainable to beat the market again this year? Probably yes. Question 6. Have I sold anything within my V4 strategy? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I did sell something, but not for the reason of locking in profit or anything like that. I only sold companies because I see opportunities in elsewhere. So for example, I had Coca-Cola before, so I sold all Coca-Cola and put all those money into Apple. Question seven, is this a perfect strategy? What's the catch? I don't think mine's perfect. There can definitely be another strategy or more strategies out there that can outperform mine. But again, my goal here is not to be the best strategy. My goal here is to beat the market, outperform VTI, outperform SPY. As long as it's doing it, I'm happy. But of course, over time, I will keep improving it, keep iterating it with my design thinking. One catch, maybe, is that my portfolio can swing up or down quite a bit due to volatility. It can and will happen. And of course, stocks like Tesla can swing 30% each year, and it did this year earlier in 2021. But I was like, sure, go swing however you want. I don't care. I don't care because time is my friend, time is on my side. If my thesis is right, it's gonna go back up. If my thesis is right, when it drops 30%, I wanna buy more. Question eight, did I do any option trading within that time frame since I've been making some option trading videos? As you can see from my trade history, yes, I did. Question nine, isn't option trading trading rather than investing? To most people, including me initially earlier last year, Yes, but now I look at it from an investing perspective. Doing so has been quite enlightening and game-changing for me. Most traders lose money. It's a fact. One of the reasons being they want to get rich fast. They have a short-term trading mindset. Again, in my experience, I found out that did not help grow my account, so I don't even see the point in doing it anymore. Therefore, I have to switch to a different mindset an investing mindset, a longer term view, a less gambling mindset. Many option traders tend to lose money because they are new and they buy options, me included initially. So instead of buying options, I sell options. If you don't understand the differences, I made a series of very easy to understand 101 videos on option trading. Links up here and in the description down below. Also, if you want to see a video on how to trade options with an investing mindset, I know it kind of sounds paradoxical, but I guarantee you it's not. Leave a comment down below. Question 10, last one. What's from here? This is fairly similar to question number seven. I'll continue to iterate on my strategy with my design thinking to make it more efficient, more effective, save me more time, and keep looking at long term and share the progress with you guys over time, maybe every six months or every year. There are something that I will do to iterate on my strategy. For example, I have Tesla, so I'll be keeping an eye on what Tesla have been doing. Building new factories, shipping more cars, and of course, tuning in into their quarterly financial reports. I will revisit the performance of this strategy and reevaluate the criteria to make adjustments accordingly. And maybe I will add positions on some new companies or trim companies in my current holdings. That concludes the 10 FAQs on my investing journey video. Does that help clarify some questions that you might have and provide some insight on how you can up your investing game? Again, I collected some of the topics that I mentioned in this video. So if you're interested in any of those, leave a comment down below and I will add it to my future video release schedule. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you learned something new or got some useful information, Congratulations, and I hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more finance videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep using design to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers!